Hi, welcome to the July weather trend forecast. In recent days, there has been a lot of discussion about the possibility or even a likelihood of it turning hot later this month. So, without further ado, let's take a look. Now, to begin with, it's anything but hot. Low pressure, centered just to the west, is leading to an Atlantic flow across the UK. That's bringing rather cool and showery conditions. I'm going to run this sequence out through the first 10 days of July to see what happens because it's quite consistent with most of the computer model output at the current time. Here we go. To begin with, it's showery, but then increasingly the unsettled weather gets focused onto the north and northwest as high pressure builds up from the Azores. By the end of the animation, high pressure is centered over the UK and it's bringing dry conditions to all regions, potentially significantly warmer too. Just to see the MoGreps ensemble pressure chart through this period, this uh, plot is for London. There's a steady upwards trend there throughout the first week and into the second. So good support for high pressure to begin building across the UK. Two media temperatures, how do they respond? As I say, it should be turning warmer. To begin with, the maximums are on the low side. These values are for London, but there's a steady upwards trend. And by the end of the first week and into the second, some of the individual runs there are suggesting mid-20s Celsius. So becoming a little bit above the average, quite possibly by the end of the first week and into the second, at least in the south. Now, rainfall is also just worth taking a quick look at through this period. The 0 to 10 day charts here are from the ECM on the left, GFS on the right. They are consistent with each other, very wet in western parts of Scotland, significant amounts of rain in other parts of the north as well, but small totals in southern Britain and central counties as well are quite, quite dry. So, good support here as well from from both of these models, that general pattern change through the first 10 days with the wettest conditions really focused on the north. How are things looking as we head through the second week towards the middle of the month? At this range, of course, it's all about using the ensemble data to try and identify the trends and the probabilities, not the specifics. Here's the 16-day GEFS plot for London. Air mass temperatures across the top, mostly above a thick black line, that's the 30 year average, and there are a number of very warm ones in the mix, especially later on. Definitely worth keeping an eye on how things develop through this period. Across the bottom, not many spikes, which indicate rain at a given time, just maybe an uptick towards the very end of the plot. And that general theme is supported by the European ECM ensemble, uh, also showing the rain forecasts for London towards the middle of July. A number of spikes there do show up, but there are lots of runs in the ECM ensemble. It's 50 as opposed to uh, 30 in the GEFS. I think it's maybe just suggesting there could be a chance of thundery downpours towards the middle of, the, middle of July, but it's important not to read too much into that, I think, at this range. Two metre temperatures, uh, the GEFS data table for London through the second week, mostly reds and pinks to begin with, 26 to 30 for reds, 30 Celsius or more, the pinks. And that warm, very warm or even possibly hot theme continues through the second week. There is an increasing trend later on for oranges to assert themselves, so 21 to 25, perhaps cooling a little bit. But at this range, it's really very difficult to be confident about that. The general theme there is for above average temperatures through this period and a chance of it turning very warm. The picture in Glasgow, so up to the northwest, air mass temperatures a little bit above the 30 year norm to begin with, but then it's an average picture later on. There's quite a big spread there. And in terms of rainfall, there are more spikes than there were on the London chart. 
and the number of them also increases towards the end. A more changeable picture being suggested for the northwest, that ongoing chance of rain, not particularly wet, but not completely dry either. And that's supported by the European Ensemble, showing rain, number of spikes throughout, and later on they, they, they start to increase again, and there are some bigger ones there. So that suggestion by, that by the middle of the month, the chance of rain, at least showery rain, will be increasing in all areas. The two meter uh, temperature data table for Glasgow, dominated by the light oranges, the 16s to 20s, with some dark orange, 21 to 25, and some yellow, so 11 to 15 Celsius. Cooler than in the southeast, significantly cooler, but not too bad, I think, relative to the average for this part of the country. How is the second half of the month looking? At this range, it is purely about the general direction of travel. Will temperatures be above or below the average? Will it be wetter or drier than normal? With that said, here is the GEFS 35 day plot for London, showing forecast air mass temperatures. There is a clear signal here. The thick purple line, the ensemble mean, is above the thick black line, the 30 year norm, and it stays there throughout the second half of July. If it's correct, there is the possibility of it turning very warm or hot at times. But it's a different story in the Northwest. The ensemble mean a little above the 30 year average to begin with, but then it dips and it stays close to it through the rest of the month. Average in the Northwest, as opposed to significantly above it in the Southeast. Do the pressure anomaly charts give any more guidance? This one is for the week beginning Thursday the 14th of July, so it's, it's taking all the time steps within that week and averaging them out. Yellows are suggesting higher than normal pressure, but the anomaly there is not especially strong by any means. High pressure probably not completely dominant. Going forwards to the week beginning the 21st, the positive anomaly has now faded and a weak negative one is beginning to develop. Those charts combined would suggest that it will not be completely dry through this period. I'll be a little bit speculative here, although it's quite naughty as I said, because this should just be about the general direction of travel, but with some very warm air potentially getting into the mix and pressure beginning to fall, there could be an increased chance of thundery downpours, especially in the southern half of the UK. The two metre temperature anomaly charts for those two weeks, so 13, uh, Thursday the 14th initially, the pinks and reds here over the southern half of the UK are showing above the 30 year norm. In fact, it's quite a strong anomaly there, plus four Celsius. But in the northwest, very close to the average. Going forwards to week beginning Thursday the 21st, similar story, the positive anomaly just fading a little bit in the south and a weak negative one starting to show up there in the northwest. Before I move away from this chart though, it's just worth drawing attention to southern Europe because there's some very, very warm conditions, very hot conditions being shown down there. And that has been the case for much of the summer so far. Of course, it's generally very warm or hot down there. That's the obvious thing to say. But compared to their averages, temperatures have been very high so far uh, this year. And what that means is if some of that heat makes its way up towards the UK, we could see some exceptionally high temperatures. It's just a possibility. I've brought this chart up. It's, it's a deterministic one, so not an ensemble based plot. And it's stepped back a little bit. It's for Sunday the 10th of July. But look at these temperatures in Spain and Portugal. 45 Celsius there, exceptional. And as I say, if some of that starts to feed up towards 
For United Kingdom, if we get a Spanish plume weather pattern developing, it's not at all out of the question, but through the middle and perhaps later stages of July, temperatures could approach or even exceed 35 Celsius. That's not a forecast though, it's just highlighting the possibility at this stage. So, to summarise, the first half of the month starts changeable with showery conditions, but then the risk of rain is increasingly confined to the northwest. After a cool beginning, temperatures rise to above the average, especially in the south, where it may become very warm. The second half of the month, there is a risk of showers or longer spells of rain, and that's greatest in the northwest through the early part of the period. Temperatures generally above the average, and there is a possibility, it's only that, of extreme heat from the continent pushing up into the southern part of Britain. Something to keep an eye on at this stage, nothing more. Towards the end of July, the risk of rain may become more widespread, possibly through thundery downpours as pressure begins to fall. So, there we have it. I think an interesting month on the way. Keep your eyes on that heat in Southern Europe. It's extreme and there is a chance it will pay us a visit. If that happens, temperatures could rocket. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you did, then as ever, please remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons below. Thanks for watching now. Bye.